Welcome back. This is James M. Generic here with the second half of my show for tonight. Or should I say this morning, I should say, because it's about quarter after one on Wild Card Weekend. Speaking of Wild Card Weekend, I got one more game to break down, and that's what I will use this segment for. The New Orleans Saints will be traveling to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. This is the classic contrast in terms of playoff experience. You got the Saints, who under head coach Sean Payton, have been to the playoffs. This will be their fifth year in the playoffs with a Super Bowl win and an appearance in an NFC title game. And the Philadelphia Eagles, who have been in the playoffs in 2010, 2009, 2008, but have not been in the playoffs since, 2000, since those years. The last two years they missed out. The last year's Andy Reid's tenure. And a new coach, Chip Kelly, and a revitalized offense, headlined by a young up-and-coming quarterback, they've really turned the corner. Last time these two teams played was last year. The Philadelphia Eagles were ended up finishing the season an abysmal 4-12, one of the worst teams in the league. They went into New Orleans in Week 9 and took on a Saints team that would ultimately sack... <laughs> that ultimately sack quarterback Michael Vick seven times. Breeze had another very solid game, 21-27 for 239 and two touchdowns, no picks. Since then, a lot has changed. The Eagles, of course, changing coaches, going to Oregon's coach Chip Kelly, who has revitalized this offense. If you look at the way these teams match up, particularly the Eagles offense against the Saints defense, I actually think it best describe it this way. I'm doing a fantasy football challenge with uh, some of my friends. And in that challenge, one of the running backs I picked for this week was LaShawn McCoy. And there's a reason. McCoy, 5.1 yards a clip, leading rusher in the NFL, Going up against the Saints team, that on average gives up four and a half, over four and a half yards a carry, which is fifth worst in the league. The Saints overall in terms of run defense, 19th overall and 11th overall in terms of yards and touchdowns respectively, which is respectable, but second in pass and fourth in yards and points, respectable. But the last time the Saints were like this, the last time the Saints had a year where the offense, it played well, but could have played better, like this one, and the defense had numbers inside the top five. The last time that happened, the Saints rolled into Seattle, a more confident, a more experienced playoff team than the Seahawks, and Seattle just blew them. Just Seattle beat them. And I'll never get over that game as a Saints fan. <laughs> but this game could very, very much mirror that because Tomorrow's weather and the weather for the next few week, next few days in the the pencil in Pennsylvania, it's going to be bitter cold. The weather at kickoff tomorrow is expected to be around 24 degrees and feel like 18 degrees. Now you figure that would really favor the Eagles, but I'm not really so sure because. I know the Saints have struggled on the road this year, but I think they're due for a win, and here's why. Because they're going up against a team in Philadelphia that is very inexperienced in the playoffs, and Chip Kelly has never called, never play called for an NFL game before. And in fact, if you look at some of the big games that he's been the play caller for when he was the head coach at Oregon, games like the Rose Bowl against Ohio State, the game against Stanford, where pretty much all they had to do was win that game and win the big the Pac-12 title game, and they'd have been in a national title game past year. Blew it against Stanford. A couple of big games in his tenure as a head coach at Oregon, the Ducks fell flat in their face, which shows that in big games, his play calling can kind of go a little bit awry. And if he wants to try to go back to that option that he used to always run with guys like Marcus Mariota, it's going to be tough. But Nick Foles this year, i got to give credit, has been the second-best quarterback statistically this year if you look at his numbers. Through 10 starts... 27 touchdowns and two interceptions. 
His interception to percentage is 0.6%. To put that in perspective of how good that is, that is the third best in NFL history. Behind only Josh McCown this year and Damon Huard from the 2006 season for the Chiefs. Brady's year in 2010, where he threw only four interceptions, 0.8%. If anything, if this teaches that anything, it's that he's been very efficient. And going against the Saints' defense, which is pretty opportunistic secondary, and has made quarterbacks this year, such as Brady, he made Brady look very average through the first for most of the game against New England. Made Cutler look very average. Made Cam Newton look like a fool in the game in New Orleans. They've had some good games against some good quarterbacks. The problem is. They're going to be going against the guy who's red hot at home. But the one thing the Saints do have going for him is that since Sean Payton entered the league in 2006 as an NFL head coach, he was an offensive coordinator before, but still. As a head coach, Saints are the best road record in the league, and you wouldn't expect that. But on the defensive side of the football, the opportunistic secondary of the Saints, I believe, will be their big, biggest strength and the pass rush. The 2013 Eagles had a lot of problems on the off had a lot of offensive line the year before, actually I should say in 2012. This year, their offensive line has played much better. Yes, they've given up 46 sacks, but then again, 15 of those were to Michael Vick, and Vick doesn't know how to elude pass pass pressure, not at all. So far the sack percentage for the team is 8.3 and for Foles is 8.1. So it's going to be interesting to see how well the Saints pass rush plays because they got a defense this year headlined by pro bowler Cameron Jordan with 12 and a half sacks and linebacker Junior Gallette with 12. 49 sacks on this defense collectively. So I look for New Orleans to win that match, to be able to get some pressure on the Eagles. But I do think the Eagles will be able to move the football fairly well, particularly with Sean McCoy on the ground and Deshaun Jackson through the air at receiver. You flip it over, Eagles this year, their defense improved, but 17th in the league, 29th in yards, 32nd against the pass, and 10th against the run. Those aren't the numbers really favoring playing the Saints. If you look at the teams that beat the Saints this year, such as the Jets, the Jets are pretty stout in both assets of the game, particularly in the run. Seattle has a, the best pass defense in the league. Carolina's got one of the best in the league, and St. Louis is one of the best pass rushes. Philadelphia has not, does not have one of the best pass rushes, does not have one of the best pass defenses, and is not really good in points allowed. The one thing they do excel at is plus 14, plus 12 in the turnover differential. Guys like cornerback Kerry Williams and linebacker Michael Kendricks, they're going to have to play a really good game. The guy in this game that I think could be an X-factor in that side of the ball on the defense of the Eagles is Trent Cole, the linebacker. Eight sacks this year, had a very good year, finally adjusting to playing outside linebacker after being a defensive end forever. And on the other side, Connor Barwin, too, who's had a really good year with five sacks. But I think that the Saints will be able to must, will be able to muster enough points in order to at least have a consistent offensive output. I don't think this is going to be a game where the Saints just go up there and just don't do anything. I think this is going to be a game, like this won't be the game in New York where they barely scored 20 points. The Jets defensive end, defensive front is far better than Philadelphia's and their turnover differentials is just as good. 
The thing that worries me in this game, though, is the Eagles' running game. They're the best run de- running offense in the NFL. LaShawn McCoy, the leading rusher in the NFL, over 1,600 yards. And they themselves, 2,566 yards on the ground for a total of 160 per game. That's pretty impressive. But I think the playoff experience will, will pay dividends in this game. I think the New Orleans Saints pull this game out, and I'll tell you why. They're due for one on the road. They've not won a ro- They've won three road games this year. At Atlanta, at Tampa, and at Chicago. None of those were convincing wins. I think that this team in Carolina, I think, played actually very well on the road. I think they did. They really, really gave Carolina everything they could handle. If Cam Newton would have complete, would have been sacked and not completed that pass for the touchdown at the end of the game, I'm sitting here talking about how Carolina's going to Philadelphia and how New Orleans is at home right now recuperating and waiting to see who they play. I feel New Orleans will win this, and I say 34-30. But the guy that I think is going to be really tough in this game for the, for the Eagles to account for is tight end Jimmy Graham. I haven't talked about him yet, and here's why. Jimmy Graham this year has feasted on defenses. Over 1,200 yards, NFL best 16 touchdowns, more than 80 catches. He's just been an amazing, amazing player for the Saints this year. They have not gotten much consistency out of their receiving core this year, but Jimmy Graham has been there every time Breeze has needed him. I think in this, I think in this game, Jimmy Graham comes, comes, uh, comes through again. I think Breeze... And the Saints finally, as a franchise, win their first road playoff game. All right, I hope you guys enjoy the games. I'll be back on Monday evening to talk about what happened, what transpired. And also, actually, I should be back on Sunday evening to talk about all the games, what everyone saw, what everyone thought. And I hope you guys enjoy it. See you Sunday night, guys. Later.